What's up everybody, it's me coming to you. Welcome to my video about the extruder of my Anet A8 3D printer. As you can see, my A8's extruder is currently separated into pieces. And this is because I want to give you an overview of its main components and show you how it works. Let's start off with some basic theory. The extruder's parts can be organized as first the hot end and second the cold end. The cold end's main part is the drive, or in my case, a motor that pushes the filament into the hot end. The hot end's main parts are the heater block and the nozzle, which are used to melt the filament and extrude it precisely. When both the cold end and the hot end are mounted on the carriage, as seen on my ANET A8, we talk about the so-called direct drive setup. To distinguish, the remote feeding or Bowden setup has just the hot end located on the carriage. The motor is then usually mounted on one of the upper edges of the frame, forwarding the filament to the hot end through a PDFE tube. The carriage is therefore a lot lighter, allowing for higher speeds and less wobbling. The only negative aspect of Bowden setups is the higher occurrence of stringing. So enough for the overall theory. Let's dig into the case of the ANET A8. Starting off with the hot end, the first important part is the nozzle. My nozzle is a brass nozzle with 0.4mm in diameter. Nozzles are available in different sizes, forms and materials. All with positive but also negative aspects. I'll dedicate another video just to nozzles. The heater block is an aluminium block with holes in it. It contains the power resistor that heats up the block, as well as the heat sensor that tells the controller the current extruder temperature. Last but not least, the nozzle is screwed into this block and filament is feeded in from above, allowing it to melt. Moving our focus to the cold end, the main part is, of course, the motor. This NEMA 17 stepper motor is precisely controlled by the controller to allow accurate extrusion of the material. To drive the filament forward, the motor's gear wheel needs some grip, which is created by pressing the wheel on the lever onto the filament. The lever is pushed up with a spring. If there is not enough grip, the filament usually slips and grinds and nothing gets extruded. The last important part of the whole extruder is the transition zone. The transition zone is the part that connects the hot end with the cold end. This metal part is in my case just a threaded rod with a hole in the center. While its main task is to allow the filament going through with little resistance, it is also confronted with the heat difference and should therefore have a big heatsink. Inside it there is a PTFE tube allowing the filament to go through smoothly, but full metal ones also exist. PTFE extruders work fine with materials like PLA, but shouldn't be operated above 230 degrees Celsius or 440 degrees Fahrenheit. With every individual part of the extruder having its own purpose, problems at the extruder can sometimes be tricky to fix, especially when you are new to 3D printing like me. I hope that this video gave you an overview of its main parts and maybe it could even help the one or other of you fighting problems as well. Thank you guys for watching, see you next week.